Hello, my name is Margaret Fuller, and I'm going to be telling you my story. I was born on May 23rd, 1810, in Cambridgeport, Massachusetts. Throughout my life, I have had a large amount of education, such as my times that I spent at the Cambridgeport Private Grammar School and Miss Susan Prescott's Young Ladies Seminary. This was all happening during a time of increased concern for personal intelligence. After I began independent studies, which is my own form of college, I was tasked with tutoring my siblings, which was my first form of teaching. Later, upon my father's request, I wrote a piece that critiqued an article that my friend wrote, and to my surprise, it was published in the Boston Daily Advisor. The next year, I received an invitation to help write for the Western Manager, but due to the unfortunate death of my father in 1835, I had to return home and help my family for a little under a year. Upon my return, I took up teaching jobs at various locations. I then left teaching to become the lead editor and first female editor of an intellectual journal called The Dial. Unfortunately, I fell on financial hardship and have to, had to leave The Dial and live with friends. But the dial still published the work that I was able to make in my off time. The great lawsuit, man versus men, woman versus women, is one of the pieces that was published where I established my firm belief in women's equality. I then took a vacation where I wrote Summer on the Lakes. This book had a large amount of success and open new doors into publication of my works. I was invited to join the New York Tribune as an editor for book reviews. This I had quite the talent for, which caused me to incorporate art and culture reviews into my job as well. During this time of success, I also published Women in the 19th Century, which then became the standard for feminism. I then went to Italy, where I became involved in their revolution. As you can see, I have contributed my fair share of to literature and women's rights. For these acts, I believe that you should induct me into the Antebellum Hall of Fame.